Hey everyone, Johnny B here with Johnny B Codes, back for our 30 days of API challenge. This is day three. In the last video, we talked about making network requests to APIs and how that data is most often returned in the JSON format. And if you weren't aware yet, the task of retrieving data from an API and presenting it in an app is kind of a huge part of being a developer. Um, you can see some of these uh, tweets making uh, mostly serious points about how apps are mostly just pretty JSON printers. So let's learn how to do that. So using Postman in the last lesson, we have been able to make API requests and see the response. But now let's get that working in an actual app, okay? So I got Xcode open here. We're gonna create ourselves a new project, single view app. So I'm gonna say next. And I'm gonna give this the name, cat-facts. And we are going to be using Swift and Storyboard in this simple project. I'm gonna say next. And I'm just gonna save that to the desktop. Very good, and uh, this is what our simple app is going to look like at the end of this video. We have just a title, simple cat facts. We have our uh, label that actually displays the fact. And then we have this button down here at the bottom that says get cat facts. So if we click on that, then it goes and hits the API making a request. Then it comes back to our app where we parse the data and then display it in this uh, label. Um, so we got all of these uh, cat facts here. A happy cat holds her tail high and steady. Alrighty. All right, so let's go ahead and real quick throw um, this UI together. So I'm gonna open up our storyboard and just add two labels, label, label, and then a, uh, come on, a button right here. Very good. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, speed through adding these constraints. Okay, perfect. So uh, basically all I did was uh, made this label pinned to the top a little bit bigger, and then I pinned the uh, label below it, 20 from the left and right, and um, 12 from the label above it. Then I pinned the button down here at the bottom uh, to be 20 from the left and right and 20 from the bottom, made its height 40, and then changed the uh, text and the background color, okay? So pretty simple stuff. All right, so I'm gonna save that. And then I'm gonna come over here to our view controller. And now we need to make our uh, ID outlet for the cat fact label and an ID action for the button. So right here, I'm gonna add our IB outlet, and I have a little code snippet that uh, kind of fills that in for me. So I'm gonna call this cat fact label. This is of type UI label, and I just kind of prefer doing it this way to the uh, control drag method. And then I have a stub for the IB action, and this is going to be get cat fact. Okay, very good. Save that, then jump back into our uh, storyboard. And we're just gonna hook those up. So I'm just going to uh, right click on view controller and control, or not control, I just drag from cat fact label to our label here and then get cat fact to our button and say touch up inside. There we go, very good. All right, perfect. So our UI is all wired up now. Let's go back to our view controller.swift. And here in our view controller, we are going to create a function where we will make the API call. Now in real apps, uh, you'd probably abstract this into a network manager class or something, uh, but for our very simple uh, purposes here, I think it's fine to just leave it right here in the view controller. So I'm going to create a function called func get cat fact. And I guess I probably should have <laughs> not named those the same thing. So let's call this uh, make fact request. There we go. And I guess I could put everything in here inside of the IB action, but uh, just to make this more uh, modular, we're gonna do it like this. So make fact request. And remember, one of the first things that we need with an API is the base URL, right? So I'm going to uh, create our base URL here at the top. I'm gonna say let base URL equal 
and that is https colon slash slash cat dash fact. And just to make sure I got this exactly right, I'm gonna come back here to our documentation and copy that and just uh, paste that right there, okay? So now we have our base URL. Then here in our make fact request, I'm gonna go ahead and construct our endpoint. So I'm going to say uh, let random fact endpoint equal, and this is going to be a URL and we're going to create it from the string constructor and we're going to say base URL plus and then our endpoint, which is slash facts slash random. Okay, so that's gonna be our uh, URL. And since uh, this constructor returns an optional, let's go ahead and just uh, unwrap that safely. I'm gonna say guard let URL is equal to uh, random fact endpoint else return. There we go. So now we have our URL. Okay, now we are ready to make our actual network request. Common naming is to uh, name it a task. So I'm going to say let task equal URL session dot shared dot data task with URL. And then we want the one with the completion handler for data, URL response and error. So just press enter and then press enter again, or I'm sorry, type in URL, then press tab and then press enter again. And we're going to uh, name these data response and error. So let's look real quick at the this code that we just wrote. So we're creating something called a task and it is a URL session data task, okay? If we look at URL session right here, this is an object that coordinates a group of related network data transfer tasks. It's a class and related classes that provide an API for downloading data from and uploading data to endpoints indicated by URLs, okay? So we have created this task. We've supplied it with the URL endpoint, which is going to uh, send it to our catfax API. And then we're going to get back from that network request, optional data, response, and error. So when we click on that button, we're calling this function make fact request. We put together our endpoint, our URL, and our uh, network request task. And we get back these three things. And we're gonna need to do a little bit of uh, work here. So I just have some uh, comments kind of listing out what we're gonna be working with here. And so first thing we're gonna do is make sure that there weren't any errors, okay? Next, we're going to check that the response is of the correct type and that the request was successful. Third, we're gonna make sure that we definitely have data. And then finally, we are going to parse the JSON data and cast it as a dictionary so we can pull out the fact text and then display it. All right, so let's take care of this first task. Make sure that there weren't any errors. So I'm gonna say if let error is equal to error and we'll just debug print that error. We'll say error.localized description and then we'll return out of this function since we had an error and that takes care of that. Next, we're going to check that the response is of the correct type and that the response was successful. All right, and the way that we do that is we say guard let response is equal to response, and we're going to make sure that it is of type HTTP URL response, okay? And this is the metadata associated with the response to an HTTP protocol URL load request. And then we're going to make sure that the request was successful. So we're going to check in the metadata for something called a status code. Okay, so we're gonna say response.statuscode. We're checking that this is equal to 200, okay? So with network requests, you have a kind of a range of status codes, and we'll get into this in the next lesson, um, but a status code of 200 means that everything is everything's good. Everything went according to plan. All right, so if either of those fail, um, again, we're just going to debug print uh, server error. 
and again we will return out of this function. And thirdly, we are going to uh, just make sure that this optional data is, is definitely there. So I'm going to say guard let data equal data else return. All right, and uh, before we go into the actual JSON parsing, let's go ahead and just print this data out. Okay, so I'm going to save that and run it on a iPhone 11. All right, here we go. Going to click on get cat fact and nothing happens. And I did that on purpose because this is a very common mistake. When you create a network task, you also have to call and it's kind of giving us a hint right here. It's saying initialization of immutable value task was never used. And so we have to call task dot resume. And this is what actually initiates the uh, network request. All right, so we add that and run it again. And now when we click on get cat fact, we should see printed out right here, 390 bytes. Okay, so that is the data that we are printing out right here. So this is not in a format that we can easily use. This is actual data bytes. So we need to uh, convert that into something, into a Swift object that we can actually pull data out of. And we do that uh, using a JSON serialization class. And we do that like this. Uh, so we need a do try catch block. So we got do and catch. And uh, we, what we're going to do is we're going to try to convert or serialize this data into uh, a JSON object. OK, so we're going to say guard let JSON equal, we're going to try JSON serialization dot JSON object with, and you can see here data, this returns a foundation object from given JSON data. Okay, so we're going to pass in the data right there. And then we're going to click on over to options. And this takes an array, and we're going to pass in allow fragments and this just specifies that the parser should allow top level objects that are not an instance of ns array or ns dictionary and we are going to cast this as a swift dictionary so i'm going to say string and any else return Okay, so let's just break this down again. What we're doing is we are using this JSON serialization class with a JSON object, and this returns a JSON foundation object from given JSON data, and you see that it returns a uh, type of any, okay? So if that all went according to plan, uh, then we can actually get that fact. So I'm gonna say let fact equal, and we say, JSON, and we just treat this like um, a regular uh, Swift dictionary. And we know that the key is text. We saw that from the last lesson where we were uh, using Postman to get the response. And we could see right there in the JSON response that the key for the fact is text. Okay. And then we need to cast that as a string. And I'm just going to use nil coalescing to uh, provide a default response just in case that fails. Now, if we were unable to serialize the data, we need to catch that error here. So again, I'm just going to do a debug print and say uh, JSON error. And then we will include the errors localized description. All right, so now we have the fact. Now we want to set the text of our cat fact label to that fact. Now, inside of the closure for this data task, we are no longer on the main thread. We're on a background thread. So we need to get back onto the main thread. And we can do that pretty easily by saying dispatch async, And then this is where we're going to set the uh, labels text. So I'm going to say cat fact label dot text is equal to fact. I'm going to save that and run it. And uh, oh, I forgot self since we are inside of a closure here. 
self and run. All right, so here we go. Let's click on get cat fact. And there we go. 92% of cats are moggies. So uh, I got a little bit of a UI issue here. Um, I need to make it so that that label will go ahead and uh, use all of the lines that it needs. Just set that lines to zero here. Save and rerun. All right, get cat fact. There we go. A cat's appetite is the barometer of its health. Any cat that does not eat or drink for more than two days should be taken to a vet. All right, so looks like that is working. We're making our first network call from our client app, pass, parsing the data, then displaying it. And if uh, anything that we did here seems a little bit murky, murky still, um, stick with me. Uh, we're gonna have a lot more network <laughs> requests to make and you're gonna get a lot more practice. And as you do more, it's gonna sink in and uh, make more sense to you as we go along, all right? So I'll see you in the next one.